Thank you so much, Barbara, and thank you to your co-directors, Maria and Carrie, for the invitation to be here. Um, I am a longtime attendee of Folger Institute programs, so it's a true honor to be speaking at one today. Um, and thank you also to Omar for your technical help. Um, my remarks today uh, are about my ongoing research on Shakespeare in the US-Mexico borderlands. And I just wanna frame them by saying that I'm a white scholar from the Northeast of these United States who has been doing a lot of place-based learning about the, the region where I live and teach. And, and my talk is a product of that learning, which I consider to be ongoing. When Chicano playwright Jose Cruz Gonzalez was commissioned to adapt The Winter's Tale for the Pacific Conservatory Theater in Santa Maria, California, he and the company's artistic director, Mark Bohr, were committed to creating a play that was deeply rooted in place. Set in California's central coast, Gonzalez's Invierno toggles between the contemporary moment in a period of time leading up to the US invasion of Mexico that would end with the Mexican cession of more than half of its territory to the United States in 1848. With all of its hybrid generic features, geographical and temporal incongruities, and spiritual elements, Shakespeare's late tragicomic romance opened up our opportunities to explore the present concerns of the Central Coast and to account for the many ways in which the complex, multi-layered and often obscured histories of the land and its peoples continue to shape the past and the present. Sorry, continue to shape that present. In Vierno, which was first produced by PCPA Theater Fest in 2010, is part of a decades-long and growing tradition of adaptations, appropriations, and translations of Shakespeare's works by Chicanex and indigenous playwrights that resituate his plays and poems within the histories, cultures, and communities of the contested region known today as the U.S.-Mexico borderlands. As Catherine Gillen, Adriana Santos, and I argue in the introduction to our recently published anthology, which Barbara just mentioned, Borderland Shakespeare appropriations emphasize the value, beauty, and restorative power of indigenous and Chicanx languages, genres, mythologies, and rituals, providing a counterpoint to the Western epistemologies conveyed in their source texts. Works of Borderland Shakespeare, we demonstrate, instantiate a dynamic, multilingual reworking of canon and place. And they do not simply reproduce Shakespeare in new contexts, but rather use his work in innovative ways to negotiate colonial power, to reframe Borderland's histories, and to envision socially just futures. Indeed, this multi-temporal orientation is one of the defining characteristics of Borderland's reimaginings and reinterpretations of Shakespeare, which necessarily draw on the cultural hybridity and palimpsestic histories of the region to explore what Ruben Espinosa describes as the temporal borderlands of Shakespeare, disrupting the supposed temporal distance between past, present, and future in the process. The first words uttered in Gonzalez's Gonzalez's Invierno are not in Shakespearean English, or even in 19th century Spanish, but rather in Somala, the language of the Santa Ines Band of Shumash Indians, the indigenous people of the land on which PCPA's theater is situated. These opening lines are sung in the form of a lullaby by the play's Paulina character, a Shumash healer woman who functions as a storyteller, a bridge between past and present, and a voice of indigenous resistance and protection throughout. To incorporate this and other instances of Shumash culture into the script and performance of Invierno, Gonzalez, Gonzalez Bohr and the cast worked directly in collaboration with the tribe's cultural director, Nakia Zavala. During this process, they also consulted with linguist Richard Applegate, who had recently worked with members of the Somala Shumash to begin revitalizing the language by creating a comprehensive user-friendly dictionary, pronunciation guide, and a corresponding educational program for reintroducing the language and culture to learners of all ages. To speak and sing the Somala language within the context of an adaptation of the Winter's Tale then, is to exceed the desire for Shakespeare's play about reunion, revival, and healing to be relevant to the original inhabitants and caretakers of California's central coast. 
It is a way of welcoming and registering the deep resonances between past and present that can occur when that which was thought to have been lost is found again. Drawing inspiration from the Winter's Tale's wide gap of time, in which the action skips forward 16 years between the third and fourth acts, Invierno intensifies the temporal instability of Shakespeare's play and actively challenges Eurocentric assump assumptions about the wide gap of time between past and present. By adding a frame in which a pair of contemporary characters fall back in time and bear witness to the political and personal conflicts unfolding within the colonial land-grant rancho system of 19th century California, Gonzalez resituates the drama of the Winter's Tale within various moments and modes of rupture. Invierno thus mobilizes Shakespeare's multi-temporal and multi-genre play towards a decolonial imaginary, a mode of storytelling that brings into being what Chicana historian and theorist Emma Perez describes as a rupturing space, the alternative to that which is written in history. In Vierno's decolonial approach to dramatizing the dynamic interaction between past and present begins to crystallize in the play's prelude when Paulina comes across the contemporary young couple in a state of crisis, standing before an oak tree on a sacred site. Carved into the tree, the stage directions explained, explain is a shape of a woman, who we, whom we later learn is Hermonia, the half-sister of Paulina, who died of grief after her Spanish ranchero husband, Don Leon, accused her of having an affair with his friend, Don Patricio. He banished their newborn infant, infant Alegria, and brought about the grief-stricken death of their son, Maximino. The young woman, a Latina teenager named Ali, who has discovered that she is pregnant, attempts to hang herself on this tree, but is stopped by the young man, a white teenager named AJ, who struggles to process the news that his girlfriend has apparently been with someone else. Just when the young man begins to strike the tree with a knife in anger, Paulina ap appears, identifying herself as win Wind Woman, first in Somala and then in English. As she invites the distressed teens to join her on a journey back in time so that they can learn from the traumas that's transpired on this land, she welcomes them and the audiences into a space ungoverned by a sense of linear time. Sometimes, Paulina tells the couple, there are tiny cracks small openings, allowing the past to live differently in the present, and the present to become truthful because of the past, joining us together in ways we never thought possible. With this temporal framing, Gonzalez's play explicitly participates in the decolonial imaginary that Perez describes, rupturing colonial timelines, worldviews, and stories in order to create space to live and think otherwise. When the young woman and the young man enter the world of the ranchos of California approximately 16 years prior to the U.S. war against Mexico, they find that the dramas around issues of land, race, and reproduction unfolding before them resonate in unexpected and sometimes uncomfortable ways with their contemporary situation. But what the events of the past ultimately bring to the surface is a deeper truth about the intergenerational impacts of trauma and the importance of healing in order to reclaim their own happiness as they look toward a future that has not yet been written. The intergenerational fracturing and healing in Invierno takes place against the backdrop of unfolding political turmoil in the region. In the gap of 16 years before the, between the first and second acts, the United States has officially declared war against Mexico and a small group of illegal, this is the play's term, Euro-American settlers have mounted a revolt against Mexican authorities. California is under attack, a, fr a frantic California Lancer informs the young couple. American immigrants called the Bear Flaggers are marching against our homeland. Named after their makeshift flag featuring the image of a grizzly bear and a lone red star, the Bear Flaggers took inspiration from the Republic of Texas and aimed to seize Mexican territory in order to establish their own republic rather than becoming citizens of Mexico. In the context of a multi-temporal reimagining of the Winter's Tale, the Bear Flag and the violence it represents resonates with the gruesome death of Alejandro, Gonzalez's reimagining of Shakespeare's Antigonus, whose untimely end engendered the famous stage direction, Exit Pursued by a Bear. It also gestures toward the greater ursine threat that continues to loom over the land. 
Although the flag of the California Republic was quickly replaced by the American Stars and Stripes when the U.S. Army invaded and occupied California soon after, a version of this symbol of settler violence currently flies over the land that is known today as the state of California. By the time the play reaches its conclusion, the war has ended and Los Americanos have won, seizing half of Mexico's territory and creating an uncertain future for those living in Alta California as a result. Following the tragic tra tragicomic trajectory of its Shakespearean source, hope and reconciliation emerge in Invierno, even from this intense personal and political trauma. Haunted by the loss of his wife, son, and daughter, and by the American conquest of California, Don Leon reconsiders his colonial perspectives. Where he once saw the future as full of endless financial opportunities and potential profit to be extracted from the land and its people, he comes to see just how destructive such ideas really were. Indeed, it is only when he truly accepts the consequences of his actions that the statue of Hermonia, in this case carved into the oak tree where the play opened by Don Leon, uh, himself comes back to life. The modern characters undergo their own transformations as the play reaches its conclusion. Having both witnessed and participated in the events of the past, Ali and AJ are better equipped to break cycles of trauma and move forward together. I don't know about the future, Ali declares in the epilogue, but I'm going to walk through it knowing I can. For his part, AJ offers to accompany her on this journey. This ending, which is not so much an ending as it is a continuation of the story unfolding on this land, suggests that the tragic ruptures of the past can illuminate the path forward. Gonzalez's reimagining of the Winter's Tale demonstrates the power of storytelling to bring about healing and to work toward a future in which that which was thought to have been lost can be found once more. When we invoke the idea of Shakespeare's in America, we are often asking how the storytelling and poetic traditions of early modern England might speak to the histories, cultures, and peoples of this land. There is no denying the fact that such questions, though, are bound up with histories of colonial domination, forced assimilation, and the attempted erasure of indigenous traditions and knowledges. They are also informed by the outsized presence of Shakespeare in school curricula, theatrical training, and funding opportunities that shore up white, anglophone, settler, supremacist ideologies masquerading as universalism. Acknowledging all of these truths, Gonzalez's Invierno proceeds from the premise that The Winter's Tale, a 17th century English play about betrayal, loss, rebirth, and reconciliation, is indeed relevant to the histories of the peoples of California's central coast. But as I hope to have shown in my brief remarks tonight, in Vierno, along with the other works of Borderland Shakespeare in our anthology, also necessarily exceeds that notion of relevance, revealing its limitations and offering a new model for thinking about Shakespeare's place in the region. By allowing the multiple temporalities and epistemologies of the borderlands to resonate together all at once, Invierno allows us to recognize a more dynamic relationship between past and present and to imagine a future in which many languages, cultures, and worldviews can thrive. Thank you. <laughs>